Hello there. Uh, so much for a December break for me, apparently, because AMG just dropped their monthly updates that happen with their FAQ and affiliation updates. And usually that isn't something I cover, but that changed when AMG dropped these bombs on us. My name is Nate, and welcome to the Gamers Guild. I'm going to just jump straight into this because I'm still reeling a bit from all the announcements. The first and probably biggest thing that happened with the December update is the new FAQ and errata document that comes with two new erratas, both to Malekith. The first is to his Conqueror of the Ten Realms power. It now just says during the power phase this character gains one additional power. It used to have an additional part saying that characters cannot modify their attack dice when targeting this character with attacks. So the characters that were specifically designed to be consistent killers, especially the ones designed to kill big targets, now work against Malekith. One of the biggest problems with Malekith is how difficult he was to reliably damage. For defense dice is a solid start, then backed up by Cloak of Shadows, which can turn skulls into crits to then roll in more dice. Meaning Malekith would on average be blocking 2-3 two, two, hits. This durability with his crazy damage output left him really hard to deal with, because unless you had ways to just constantly stagger him, the only reliable way to get damage was in large pools of dice. Like Angry Hulk sized pools. But now, some of the consistent damage dealers of the world can use that consistency to level the playing field. The second errata simply says, replace the cost of ferocity superpower with 3. Meaning that Malekith can't charge on turn 1 without some help. And this was one of the other big problems with the Tiger King. He could basically charge into your deployment zone turn 1 and likely daze a target that didn't have defensive tech. To say this was a negative play experience at all levels of the game is a pretty safe bet. Sure, the competitive tables have found ways to deal with it, but this early inconsistent aggression narrowed what kind of lists could succeed at an event. And then at a weekly game night kind of situation where the mood is a bit more casual, well, we didn't even put Malekith on the table at our store because of how much of a just problem character he was. Granted, a lot of that early aggression can still happen, but it's more telegraphed because they either have to be running the big cat with Captain America and Avengers, or they have to have a telegraphed way to get power onto Malekith and are then also spending additional resources. So, Malekith won't be a problem that can stick around forever also now because bringing characters who can deal out consistent damage is now a surefire answer to the Dark Elf. And kudos here to AMG for what is realistically a really quick turnaround for a nerf to a singular problem character in less than four months since his release. To me, all of this brings up the question of did AMG go too far with Thor's nerf hammer onto Malekith? These changes, in addition to the ruling on not being able to prepay for failure results with Cloak of Shadows, has done a number on him. And honestly, my answer is maybe, because it's too early to tell. As it stands, Malekith, I think, is in a pretty good space. He isn't able to easily be abusive on the table turn one, and if so, there are additional resources being put into an already 7 threat character, and a lot of that turn one aggression is where the negative play experiences would come up. He is now easier to take down with focused fire, and you don't have to rely on him whiffing on defense rolls because you can make your offensive rolls on the same level as what his defense can do. But everything else Malekith has been known to do is still very scary and very much so available on the table. Malekith will only get to charge on turn 2 on average now, but will also have the power left over to use Cloak of Shadows on that alpha strike and still have a second action which means he has decent odds also of one-shotting most any three-threat character right out of the gate, even if they have some defensive tech. His ability to retain priority despite dazing multiple characters before they get to activate because of his high threat level is pretty nasty. His leadership is still amazing for when you bring him with a kill-focused cabal with members like Baron Zemo, Bullseye, and Hood. Ferocity costing a 3 is only really stalling out his turn 1 aggression for the most part. 
He has plenty of power generation between his beam and Blade of Midnight attacks. He still has access to his tactic card, Phantasmagoria, which is a very powerful control effect along with the healing side of things. You won't be able to run him into the entire enemy team and him loop through the experience probably, but I'm pretty sure he's still more durable than Hulk even. Now, time will tell if his reduced durability has a hit too far, but I feel pretty confident in saying that at worst, he has dropped from S tier down to a solid B, who shouldn't be brought into every scenario or into every opposing affiliation, but will still shine on the right scenarios and threat levels. The other thing worth covering here is the updated affiliation list. We got a full look at the Weapon X affiliation, which had some cool, unexpected additions like Domino, but also some interesting omissions like the original Wolverine and Sabretooth models. Wolverine being the very interesting omission because the Leadership Tactic card can be played by any James Logan Howlett, which means that we have an unaffiliated leader for the time being at least. And since the Leadership can only affect affiliated members, I do hope that this gets changed. Uh, the other surprise in the affiliation document were the new Sabretooth Apex Predator and Logan the Wolverine, and the fact that they are joining the Brotherhood and Uncanny X-Men respectfully. This is coming to us as a bit of a surprise because of, well, this. One big distinction, of course we've talked a little bit in the past, or mentioned I think on a couple of different places that... Logan here, not X-Men affiliated. Now, to be fair to Will, there are a plethora of reasons that this could have changed from when this was originally released in early October to now, or maybe it didn't change since then, but Will was just wrong. One of the problems that AMG has talked about themselves during their many Stravaganza panels is developer brain where basically they have so many different versions of a character in their head because of all the changes a character has gone through from conception to internal playtesting to external playtesting to final release. And over the course of that time, it's very likely they both were not originally a part of those affiliations and then were, and who knows, maybe back and forth. Not to mention, Will is the director of product development for five different games that we know of, MCP has gotten to the point where I don't even remember everything about all of the characters, and it's really the only minis game I play. All of that to say, I am really excited to see what Victor is going to be capable of with Magneto's leadership, because his biggest drawback was his lack of power generation, and he didn't have any affiliated homes that I was anticipating that would be able to help with that problem. Uh, and then Logan will still be a cool addition to Storm's X-Men as a flanking piece, but won't be able to take too much advantage of Storm's leadership. The Leapfrog won't really work since Logan wants to have some distance from his friends to get the rerolls while he is on the hunt. As well, the cover isn't going to be as helpful since all of his attacks will place him within range 1 of the target. So, from these additional affiliations, Creed seems to make out better than Logan, but both are still welcome additions. Real quick, I want to thank the plethora of people who have subscribed in the past week for the channel to hit 5,000 subscribers. Uh, that's just a really cool thing to hit for me, so thank you all. With that, December will still not be a month of consistent content, but who knows, with this huge and welcome change from AMG, maybe there are more surprises to cover this month. Maybe even a certain quarterback will make a surprise appearance since we just got a spider foe reveal with Rhino. Uh, thank you all for watching, and until next time, keep on gaming.